Hello everyone, we are team Cryptolux from Luxembourg and uh, we have worked on asset management. Currently, asset management is quite a complicated uh, thing in finances and in economics as the process of just transferring assets from one entity to another is has to go through the whole system every single time that you are doing it even though it's just from one entity to another inside the same company you still have to do the same uh, steps you can't just do a simple signature it's also expensive because of this long and complicated uh, procedure and also because of this it's quite uh, slow as well so to battle this we have implemented the Cryptolux uh, blockchain asset management which is uh, which uses Ethereum technology, blockchain technology to solve uh, our problems uh, it is uh, user friendly and by that we don't only mean the ease of use but we also mean that the this chain of command and this chain of uh, work that should be performed for an asset management and an asset exchange is much much shorter is cheaper as well as it is completely implemented in uh, blockchains and because of that it's much faster than current methods of uh, asset management <coughs> uh, so the outline first we will show that our protocol or our asset management system is uh, that is trustful, safe, and cost-efficient as well. It implements uh, know your customer as well. It is uh, it has privacy features and it is easy to use as well. Okay, so let me get a bit more details about uh, safety, cost, and uh, KYC problems. So we implement in Ethereum. Ethereum is well known and established itself in the recent past as a very secure platform. So. The confidence of users is uh, proved by the rise in price of, of Ether and the role of smart contracts growing and more importantly, more and more digital assets uh, land in Ethereum, people start trading on them and, of, and our solution follow uh, kind of the best practices but not only follow them but kind of extend them and brings much more, much better features uh, also empowered by uh, cryptographic uh, protocols. So one uh, uh, very nice feature that we have for the KYC we handle KYC problem, so the KYC problem is well known. So by default, you kind of for every transaction you are uh, supposed to pass some uh, KYC verification. And we uh, imagine there there could be a company kind of KYC company that uh, whitelists all the users. And uh, when we think that it handles a, a registry of Ethereum addresses that are eligible for trading uh, for particular uh, asset types, but uh, Think a bit. So, the, is this uh, KYC company supposed to know, uh, like, uh, about a million of different users, what are their real identities are and what their Ethereum addresses are? This is a kind of, uh, a kind of privacy violation. It's a big vulnerability. And to show how to actually handle it with a very nice cryptographic scheme. So, we uh, use uh, we plan to use some identity ledgers like Sorin or Uport, from where uh, real persons take uh, various various zero knowledge proofs and show them to the KYC company to prove that they, they, suppose they are good for whitelisting and separately uh, the KYC company issues them a, a very nice proof of KYC and this proof is used separately and in an unlinkable way so that uh, all the Ethereum addresses in the registry are on one hand belong to uh, real world identities that have passed KYC but on the other hand no one is able to directly link a particular <laughs> Ethereum address to a real world user. So, so, I will talk a bit more about implementation detail. Uh, so, uh, here's the main structure of our project. So, we have the token issuer. It is the asset management company that issues the tokens, the, uh, the tokens that represent assets. We have a contract that represents these assets inside the Ethereum platform. We have implemented a decentralized exchange in form of an Ethereum smart contract that handles these tokens and can transfer ownership in a secure way. Uh, and while doing that, while performing transactions with assets, uh, the exchange talks to the KYC contract to make sure that every transaction um, is approved by KYC. So here's a bit more about how we implement our token contract that represent the asset. It is um, an implementation of a well-known ERC-20 uh, interface 
that has been used in many projects recently in the Ethereum ecosystem. It is basically a, um, a smart contract that maintains a list of balances of users and can transfer ownership um, of assets between users. Uh, our decentralized exchange um, implements this simple API so users can submit um, ask <coughs> orders and bid orders and we also implemented the matching uh, functionality that finds the best bid and the, bet, uh, and the best ask and um, executes them. The advantage of the system is that uh, all this is executed on top of the uh, blockchain. That means that the users don't have to trust any third party that their orders will be matched correctly and executed correctly. And uh, what's even more interesting, that we also have implemented uh, these features such as private orders. So we can imagine the situation where two players do not want to reveal um, the price that they are willing to pay or some kind of other uh, details about their orders. They can submit um, the bits in uh, an encrypted form and they will be decrypted only um, before the execution. They will be decrypted and then immediately executed. So now we show the demo. <coughs> So what we implemented are the, basically the contracts and also we implemented a web-based interface to the exchange. So first we deploy the contracts, we, we can do it through the, just the MIST, the Ethereum wallet, or we have some automated scripts just to put them to the blockchain. For the demo we used a private blockchain, but this of course can be moved to the main Ethereum blockchain. I'll, I will skip just the deployment steps. So we, we deploy the KYC contract, the token contract, and the exchange contract. And this is the interface for the exchange that we have implemented. It is uh, written in JavaScript, so it can be run in at some server or in at localhost or maybe possibly in future it can be run in, in the blockchain using the swarm technology. It, it doesn't store any data on the computer, it stores everything in the blockchain and pulls data from the blockchain. So here we see some exchange already open but now we created a new exchange and we load it into our interface and First, so there are no bits and asks, no orders, and we just run some script to load some random orders just to make it live. So here we see some orders. Red color means that they are not eligible for trading because the KYC was not uh, has not approved them yet. And yellow means that these orders were issued by the current uh, selected wallet. What we want now to do to from the KYC to allow this some of these people to some of the services to trade. So we <coughs> send a transaction to the contract which uh, enables some people <coughs> to trade. This can be done only by the owner of the KYC company. And then we see that the orders, some orders are eligible for trading, and the trading can, can happen. And of course, we can put some orders from the client itself. For example, now we will put some uh, sell order to sell sto some uh, 100 of tokens, which here are lumens, by the price of one Ethereum. And while it's when it will be propagated to the blockchain when it will be mined, it will appear here in the list. We have to wait some time. And here we see that it has <coughs> appeared on top of the list. So basically that's it. <coughs> so uh, basically uh, the highlights of our contributions are that we have a, a cost efficient uh, Ethereum implementation. Um, we proved some gas costs, uh, costs and uh, they are low. And um, we also have a, um, a KYC which is um, preserving privacy for the users. 
Uh, at the same time, we have the feature of um, confidential orders, as uh, Sergey previously described. And in the end, we also show you the uh, graphical user interface for um, uh, users and admins. And uh, if you have any questions, we are going to answer them. Match price function running over encrypted bits or uh, plain text bits? No, it's supposed that uh, a kind of the encrypted uh, encrypted orders are revealed just at the time of, uh, of execution. Well, there could be some possibility of uh, mining trace, but uh, we consider it uh, really negligible. So the orders are private, uh, orders are confidential to the moment that uh, you actually send the key, and uh, it's very easy to submit to have an interface which does all the encryption and decryption for you. So, what's the running time of your match so in, as a function of the order book. So it's uh, within a single transaction, so Sorry, but I thought match price is matching your matching order against the order book. Yeah, it's instant. So, well, it's linear in, in terms of orders. It's linear in between the size of the order book. That's yeah. Okay. yeah, for the moment it's linear, yes. Okay, it can be faster, of course. Well, how can it be faster if the bids are Ah, well, well, because when... <laughs> Uh, when they encrypt it, they, they, it can be faster, but uh, when the dollars are open, you can uh, like have a... No, not right here. Sorry? Uh, the price preserving encryption not right here. Okay. So, uh, are you saying that you could do something like a log network look up time or yeah, that's, uh, that's also possible. So if you employ a bit more sophisticated crypto scheme, which like allows, 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 you, allows you proving that you have... Uh, so we just uh, use for the moment a symmetric, uh, symmetric encryption here. So it's kind of uh, kind of shared so with a secret key if you have a proof. But if you employ uh, symmetric crypto schemes like uh, identity-based encryption and stuff, you can, you can of course make proofs about, about your bits. And uh, well, you kind of be closer and closer to Zcash and stuff. And, uh, uh, of course, it can be even the execution of this order can be kind of uh, uh, confidential. I actually wanted to ask more about how the encrypted orders work. So you said they're symmetrically encrypted. So when the person you put something on the order book and then someone else wants to come and match it, do you get notified? Does the person who placed the order originally get notified that they then have to submit the key? Is that how it works? Uh, no, so we implemented the simplest scheme for a, for a moment where there is kind of shared key. So suppose that there is a group of people who share a key, but they don't communicate with each other like offline, but uh, they, uh, they, they, they trade on the same exchange, and these orders are uh, by default protect, uh, protected by this key. Uh, or, for example, uh, they, uh, they, can, uh, they derive, uh, they, they produce a key in a decentralized way, and then uh, you and then encrypt uh, with this key orders uh, up to the moment, like for example, every new key <coughs> has a fresh key, and then uh, uh, and then the orders get uh, decrypted. So the, the orders are not confidential with regard to the other people that are trading in the same scheme, just for other people that might be viewing the blockchain. Is that right? Yes, yes. So okay. it's uh, only for it's only group the, the simplest the group wise uh, uh, confidential scheme. Can I ask a, a customer question? Um, with the KYC and the proofs, does the, do the customers have to come and register their proofs, or can you leverage existing databases of KYC? Um, yeah, of course. Uh, and the, 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 the well, if you kind of prove, if you can issue KYC uh, certificates, uh, kind of uh, online without people coming in person, that, that that's possible. So if it, it all depends on how much trust you you have in uh, other uh, registries. So, for example, uh, you say that I trust registry from xx.com, and that if I uh, send you an uh, we encrypted channel, if I send you a request, so please give me a KYC proof, and I prove uh, to you that I am registered at xx.com, and I ask you to bring me uh, to give me an anonymous uh, uh, credential that I have passed the KYC session. Then yes, it can, can all be done remotely. Then I will then is able to I will then be able to modify this uh, anonymous credentials to register my Ethereum address uh, as a KYC passed, uh, as KYC whitelisted address without being linkable to my real identity. Sorry, one more question. Did you guys implement the um, 
the proof part of it, or is it just, did you implement just the part where the KYC uh, kind of intermediary person registers that a, and addresses KYC? Yeah, in, in the demo we have only uh, the, the simple scheme where there's the, the owner of the KYC contract and it adds and, and, and removes speed, but um, we have access to the code of uh, various uh, ident uh, anonymous credential schemes like identity mixer from IBM and, and similar stuff so that they can be uh, leveraged to, to bring more uh, privacy here. How do you implement uh, the token issuer? Can you elaborate on that? Uh, token issuer is just, uh, it just deploys a, a smart ARC20 compatible contracts with a certain number of tokens belonging to a certain uh, a holder and, the, and that's it. So you just kind of, uh, you deploy a contract and then you write in the website, so okay, so here's like, I split my entire physical assets into a thousand parts and uh, I issue a thousand tokens and I, um, I and uh, whoever it's uh, written in the in the token contract owns that many tokens, I uh, uh, agree that uh, he indeed owns that ma that many physical assets. So I, uh, I, cert I uh, certify this one-to-one -one correspondence. So I, I allow this uh, uh, trading of these tokens. And if, uh, like in a year, someone comes to me and wants to sell this and, and brings to me like this 20 tokens that I I'm supposed to give him, I'm supposed to redeem these tokens in some way to give him like physical assets or or in some uh, different way. I have a question about the KYC provider. Is he applying on each transaction or once uh, done so for an account? The KYC transaction, so it registers an Ethereum address once. Of course, there is a feature that it kind of expires, so we, have, we might want to renew without, like, uh, proof that you still uh, is uh, a registered user for the KYC procedure. And uh, But uh, the, the token contract asks the KYC uh, contract every time it wants to make a transaction. That, that's yes, but uh, the, the KYC company doesn't interact, it's, it's all decentralized. But the KYC, can he alter the market? Can he filter some, I mean, block you on some transaction, learn that you want to do some trade and use this information or not? Well, technically yes, but uh, you know that due to the price preserving KYC, the KYC company does know who is exactly behind uh, this Ethereum address. So it, it of course, so uh, when you deploy a contract, you, s you say, I, uh, my tokens are whitelisted by this KYC company. But if you see that this KYC company is malicious, you uh, uh, modify your token contract saying that, okay, so now the KYC is done by, by this company and, his, and its token contract. Now you, have, you can uh, use your token transfers. Could, could the KYC company revoke uh, yeah. This this information. Yes. 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 Okay. Any any last questions? No. Cool. Well, thank you, CryptoLab.